Jody was a club man. A club man through and through. He liked his beer and he sucked his share of Federation brew. Of all the holy drinkers, George was always forced. And the steward said that Jody had the most pretty thirst. Jody was a club man. He never missed a session. To help him pay his drinking debts, his missus took in washing. On Mondays at the tournaments, he'd suck 12 pints a mare, and six more on the bus back then, and never torn a hair. Sometimes on a Tuesday, he'd give his wife a treat, and take her to the bingo, making sure she got a seat. The bingo started promptly at 25 to 9. It was 12 pound if you shoot at hoose, and 3 pound for a line. But George preferred a Wednesday. That night, the bar was quiet. It gave him room to walk upon his alcoholic diet. Now, every Thursday evening, they held the discotheque, attended by a thousand kids with hair doing past their neck. But Geordie didn't like it. He said, they are our rowdy, and all that jumping up and down will turn the special cloudy. Friday was a sober night. George only drank two quarts. That was the night he took the floor as captain of the darts. His eye was clear, his eye was straight, when even for a double. And them that tacked a mere assumed would find themselves in trouble. But Saturday was the best day. There is no doubt at all. That was the day when Jory drove his missus up the wall. He boozed non-stop without a break to Lowe's at half past ten. And then he took twelve bottles again and started off again. Geordie was a club man. The club was Geordie's life. And when it came to Sunday night, he always took the wife. She'd sip a bit of lemon while George looked on with scorn. And if she wanted any mere, she'd have to pay her toll. It was halfway through September when Geordie caught a cold. He couldn't shake it off at all. Poor George was getting old. The doctor took his temperature and packed him off the bed. Just stay there for a day or two. You'll be all right, he said. But Jody couldn't rally, and he never eat a bite. He was slowly getting weaker, and he started losing weight. The autumn leaves were falling when poor George gave up the fight and was called before the chairman of that grand club of eight. That night the club was silent. The barmaid shed a tear. The dart team called their match off, and they hardly touched that beer. The chairman called a meeting when he heard of Geordie's teeth. We must all attend the funeral, and the club will send a wreath. They buried George at Benton, that's just past Forest Hall. His tombstone's there for all to see, just by the churchyard wall. And written on that tombstone, in a hand that's clear and true, beneath the letters R.I.P., Three mere say C.I.U. Because Jody was a club man, a club man till the end. And when he died that autumn day, our club land lost a friend. But what one lost, another gained. Because that day in September, the secretary up a height 